So ask and you shall receive and here it is, the big showdown between the three small gimbals. This video is going to be a comparison between the Moser Aircross 2, the Xeon Weeble Lab and the Ronin SC by DJI. Now a lot of these observations are obviously going to be opinion, but I'm going to try and be as objective as possible. This is how it will work, it's going to be split into four categories. Each category is going to be worth a different amount of points based on how important I think they are. The first category is going to be design and build quality, that's going to be worth 5 points. The second category is going to be features and that's going to be worth 10 points. The third is going to be usability which is going to be worth 15 points. And the fourth is going to be stability which is going to be worth 20 points. Obviously with round 4 which is all about stability we'll have a footage comparison there. So let's jump straight into round 1. So round 1, design. With the Air Aircross 2 it does feel a little bit like hollow plastic and I think this is because they've made the arms a little bit bigger so they can balance more heavier setups and more front heavy setups and that's one of the best features about this gimbal the fact that you can balance such a variety of different setups on it and yet it's still so small but I think what they've done is they've added more weight to the arms and so they've had to compromise somewhere and so they've used a bit more of a cheaper plastic for the handle um, so it's obviously not as premium feeling here. So the handle on this gimbal is a little bit thicker than the others. Um, it seems just less comfortable to hold. I don't know whether the grip's just not designed properly. And after a couple of days, I did re feel really uncomfortable holding this. It also feels a little bit heavier in real life than the other two. I really wanted to give this a three because of the plasticky build quality, but actually the design of the arms and how you can balance front heavy setups really, really easily, as well as like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Um, I think this bumps it up to a 4, so 4 out of 5 for the Moser Aircross 2. Now onto the Ronin SC. When you first pick this up, it really has a sort of premium feel to it. So it's sort of like a rubberized metal. Um, the grip on it is really, really nice, and it just feels that sort of premium quality. So they've gone for the standard gimbal design you'll be familiar with and except on the front there's no screen instead you have three little led lights which will show you which mode you're in so they've really gone for the mantra of keep it simple and although i've used the moser aircross 2 now where you can change all the settings straight from the gimbal i actually really really like the simplicity of using the ronin sc another great thing about this is you can disassemble the gimbal by unlocking it here taking the battery compartment off and you can also take the tripod legs off as well because you can take it into such small pieces, it means it's absolutely perfect for traveling with. The only issue is the battery is in this little compartment here um, and the charger for the battery is actually in this compartment. So to charge the whole gimbal, you have to have it all put together and set on your table, which can really mess up your charging setup sometimes. So it's small size, it means it's not gonna handle front heavy setups that well. So just be careful on what you're balancing with this gimbal. Overall though, I'm gonna give this gimbal a four out of five for design and build quality. Finally, the Weeble Lab. See, the build quality of the Weeble Lab kind of comes in between the Ronin SC and the Moser Aircross 2. It doesn't have that really hollow plasticky feel, but it doesn't feel as premium as the Ronin SC. The design here is obviously different and experimental. They've got the dedicated horizontal handle here um, so that you can attach the tripod legs to it and go into underslung mode. And this actually works really, really well. The best thing about this gimbal is just how small it is. It is literally tiny. And if you're obsessed about getting the smallest equipment for your travels, then this gimbal is absolutely perfect. If I take the tripod legs off here, you'll see it is literally tiny. However, despite all this, the build is kind of flimsy. I have <sighs> these legs, honestly. Okay, so let's start with the legs. I wasn't gonna start with the legs, but they've just completely messed up if you put them out and then shake it a little bit, the legs will go back in. It makes it impossible to put the gimbal down. So if I keep this gimbal, I'm gonna to need to buy some more legs for it. After that, there's a little locking mechanism for the, for the tilt axis. And I've heard people have lost this. I've heard it's broken. It's just really, really flimsy and difficult to use. Um, and lastly are the locks. So all these three gimbals have locks for the axis, which helps you balance them. And it also helps you store your gimbal without it sort of rattling around. The locks on the SC and the Moser Aircross 2 are switches, so they actually have an actual switch feeling to them, whereas on the Weeble Lab it's a kind of lever, and I notice quite a lot of the time when I'm using the Weeble Lab, 
the lever will just switch to lock mode without me even realizing. Um, and that obviously puts pressure on the motors a little bit. So in terms of the locks, they're not very well designed either. I just really, really love how small this gimbal is, but it doesn't really make up for the design quirks that it has. So the Weeble Lab gets a three out of five for me. So round two is features, and the reason this is only worth 10 points is because pretty much every gimbal comes with the same old feature set now. They'll come with different lock and follow modes, the ability to change the motors, uh, tracking, um, but there's a few features that stand out to me. So the Ronin SC and the Moser Aircross 2 are the sort of newer gimbals. So they've jumped on the hype of the Force Mobile thing where you can use the accelerometer on your phone to control the gimbal without actually touching the gimbal. I'm not sure how important this is, so I'm not going to get too much into that. But again, the Ronin SC and the Moser Aircross 2 are newer, so they have features like the auto tuning where you can balance up your camera and then activate the auto tuning and it will kind of adjust the strength of the motors based on the weight distribution of your camera lens setup. And they also have the balance check so you can see if your camera has been balanced up correctly, both of which the Weeble Lab doesn't have. Finally, the Moser Aircross 2 has the ability to do the vortex mode without actually touching the gimbal. So what you do is you put the gimbal into vortex mode and you can start it off at a certain speed, you can change the speed, and you don't even need to touch the control stick, which is quite a nice feature and just kind of innovates a little bit more than the other two. So finally, I think the Ronin SC has all the features you really, really need, but it really does suffer when it comes to that two kilogram payload. And so for me, the Ronin SC gets an eight out of 10. The Moser Aircross 2 has all of the features built in, which is absolutely amazing. And so for me, that's a 10 out of 10. The Weeble Lab being the older gimbal misses out on some of the features that the newer gimbals have ha had. And so for me, the Weeble Lab gets a seven out of 10. Round three is usability. And this is worth 15 points for me because I think the aim of these small gimbals is to be great for run and gun. So it's really, really important that they're really easy to use. You can adjust settings quickly and you can balance quickly too. The Moser Aircross 2 has all of the settings built into the screen. It's one of the best things about this gimbal is that you can calibrate, you can auto tune, you can balance check, you can change the strength of the motors. You can do pretty much anything you need to do with the gimbal straight from the screen about an app. And that's one of my favorite things about this gimbal. The only problem with this is that it's quite easy to accidentally press the buttons and you'll be changing settings when you do that. The only thing it needs really is a firmware update just to change that so that there's an option to lock the button so you're not accidentally pressing them and accidentally changing the settings. I also love how easy the Aircross 2 is to balance. Um, it's definitely, in my opinion, the easiest gimbal to balance out of the three. Even though I've owned the Weeble Lab for quite a while now, I still found it really, really easy to balance on the Aircross 2. So overall, a great result. The only thing letting it down really is the accidental button presses, which does happen quite a lot. The fact that the handle isn't the most comfortable to hold and so after a couple of days of shooting, you will get fed up. And also throughout using this, I did notice some drifting. Um, sometimes the pan or tilt wouldn't actually keep up. I'd have to keep double tapping that trigger button to center it back up again. So it definitely still needs some work, but it's not a really bad experience. So for me, I'm giving this a 12 out of 15. So looking at the Ronin SC for usability now, um, they definitely have gone for the simple is better approach. And I actually really, really like this. So you get three modes already programmed in that you can change between. And if you hold the trigger, it goes into slider mode, so it locks all the axis. From there, you have to go into the app and from the app, you can change the programmed modes. You can auto tune and you can do a balance check. Um, the app is actually really, really simple and really quick to use. So I'm not gonna deduct points for having to go into the app because it's really quick and it's not actually that much slower than doing it through the screen on the Moser Aircross 2. It's just a design choice that they've gone for simplicity here. So the app is really easy to get used to and use. Um, people that like the simplicity will like the fact that there's only a couple of settings on here. And if you don't like the simplicity, then it's quite easy to get, get the app out and change settings quickly. So balancing isn't the easiest on the Ronin SC. For some reason, they've put the tilt and the roll axis balance into the same screw. So once you unscrew one screw, that loosens the tilt and the roll. 
So you really want to be thinking about locking each axis when you balance it. To counteract this, they have put a little clicking mechanism in the balancing for the row axis, um, which allows you sort of fine control over it. And they've put a little knob on the quick release plate um, so you can remember how to balance the tilt on your gimbal. This gimbal is actually so simple, there's not much more to talk about, but in my opinion, simplicity is really good here. And so the Ronin SC for me gets a 13 out of 15. With the Weeble Lab, you have a little switch here, which switches it between pan follow mode and all axis lock mode. And there's a POV button, which is really nice to have a dedicated POV button because I use this a lot for dancing at weddings. So there is a little screen on the front and from this you can see which setting you're in and you can also calibrate and change the motor strength from this screen too. The problem is when you want to adjust the speed of your follow or the dead zone, you have to go into the app. And this is where Xeon really, really falls apart. So the app for these gimbals is terrible. It's slow, it's definitely not easy to use and it's difficult to pick up. I'd definitely call for a redesign of this app if Xeon want their new Gimbal S to succeed. So for this reason, unfortunately, the Weeble Lab only gets a 10. Once you've dialed in your settings on the app and played around with it a bit, it's okay, but then just never use the app again. And the final round is stability. This is the most important round because obviously the purpose of a gimbal is to stabilize your shots. So I took the gimbals out to the forest and tried to replicate the same shots with each gimbal, to see how each of them would perform. And here's the results. So overall the results were really really similar, all the gimbals are absolutely great at stabilising the footage. The Moser Aircross 2 only suffered with the tilt where it seemed to happen in little increments and also the running shot where there was still some of that micro jitter in there. The Weeble Lab was probably the best performer overall but it could have done better in some of the walk-in shots and I just think it's because the gimbal is so light and so small that it's more difficult to keep steady than the other two. The Ronin SC performed really, really well across the board. The only thing it really struggled with was the running shot. And I think that's just because the motors aren't strong enough to keep up with that sort of running motion. So I went through every shot and rated them out of 20. I then calculated the average and every single one of these gimbals came out exactly the same at 18 out of 20. 
So overall, these are the scores. The Weevil Lab comes in at third place with a total of 38 points. And to be honest, this is an older gimbal, so I didn't expect it to do as well against these two newer gimbals. But I'll be interested to see what the Xeon Gimbal S can do to improve on the Weevil Lab. In second place is the Ronin SC with 43 points. And in first place is the Moser Aircross 2 with 44 points. So very, very close there. Again, this test has been completely unscientific and some of it has been my opinion. So I just wanted to give my final verdict on these gimbals. At this point, the Moser Aircross 2 is probably the best small gimbal for most people. It will handle pretty much any mirrorless camera you throw at it. The Panasonic GH5, the Sony a7 III, the Fuji X-T3 and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. It has all the features you'll ever need from a gimbal and has lots of balancing room so it doesn't really struggle with front heavy lenses, which the other two gimbals definitely do. The Ronin SC is also a really great option within reason. If you're running an a7 III with like a lighter lens, then it would definitely work. Um, if you're running sort of an APS-C setup like an A6500 or A6400, then of course this will work perfectly. But as soon as you start getting a little bit heavier than that, or you start getting more front heavy lenses, the Ronin SC will start to struggle. But in my opinion, it is the most joy to use, it's easy, it's simple, and it produces good results straight out of the box. The Weeble Lab, being the older gimbal, lacks some of the features of the other two, and the build quality isn't amazing. I can't recommend this at the moment, but I'm looking forward to seeing what Xeon can do with the new up and coming Xeon Gimbal S. But for now, I think you'd be happy with either the Ronin SC or the Moser Aircross 2. I think the Weeble Lab is a little bit dated now. When Xeon come out with the Gimbal S, I'm looking forward to how it compares to these two other gimbals. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos on cameras, lenses, gimbals and travel. If you have any opinions or questions, then do leave a comment down below. I'll try and get back to everyone if I can. And obviously, if you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.